Hi and hello, I am Athena Pondian here. Welcome to the Basics of Biomedical Classroom once again. Today we are going to see the next vital parameter that is EEG, that is Electroencephalography. Come, let me start the class now. Under this electroencephalography topic, we are supposed to answer five most important questions. That is, the first question is, what is this EEG? Okay, then the second question is, what is the purpose of this EEG? Then the third question is, how we can able to acquire this EEG signal? Okay, acquire the EEG signal from the human body. Then the fourth question is, what is the waveform we got after the acquiring from the human body? The electrical signal. What is the waveform is look like? Okay. This is the fourth question. That is waveform. Then the fifth question we need to go is, what are the things we are going to analyze using the waveform? Okay. What is the measure of a form, waveform? That is EEG waveform. These are the five important questions we need to answer. So the first question we are supposed to answer is, what is EEG? Please remember EEG. The name E and E and G are individually we can able to represent. This E represents electro. Electro means that recording of electrical activity. This encephalo, this the second E is nothing but encephalo. In dictionary I just go and refer this encephalo is referred as brain. The term brain can be represented in the way of encephalo. Then G is nothing but graphy. That is, it indicates it, it is nothing but a method or technique or a process. Okay, it is nothing but a technique or method or a process. So just combine this recording of electrical activity of brain using some of the techniques. That is called as the electroencephalography. In the definition, we can able to say that Electroencephalography is an electrophysiological monitoring methodology for especially acquiring or recording the electrical activity of the brain by placing some of the electrodes over the scalp. Okay, this is the encephalography, that is electroencephalography. The second question what we need to answer is what is the purpose of this EEG okay of course you know that what is EEG what is the purpose of acquiring electrical activity of the brain what is the need of that see of course we know that there are so many neurological disorders are there that is only because of the brain okay brain because of the brain's discomfort only we are receiving so many neurological disorder especially take an example of epilepsy Epilepsy is a multiple neurological disorders of the neural system. That can able to diagnose using this EEG. Through this study only, we can able to understand the person is affected by epilepsy. Not only epilepsy, we can able to understand the stroke. Stroke of the particular person and the mental activity of the particular person. All the things can be acquired by using EEG. So that is... This is all the purpose we need to take the electrical activity of the brain. This is the second question answer. The next question, that is the third question is, what is the procedure to acquire the EEG? Of course, you know that what is EEG, we understand. Then of course you know that what is the purpose of EEG we understand. So now how we can able to acquire this EEG signal from the brain. Of course you know that all the signals can be acquired from the human body using transducers like electrodes. Okay. So here 10 to 20 electrodes are used for acquiring this electrical activity of the brain. So this particular 20 to 20 electrodes. especially international 10 to 20 systems is there. That is the thing. We need to follow where this 10 to 20 electrode is placed in a scalp. Scalp is the external layer of a scalp. So this internationally 10 to 20 system represents where you need to place the electrodes over the scalp. We are not supposed to place anywhere in the uh, brain, anywhere in the scalp. 
that is the procedure there that is the diagrammatical notation there where we need to exactly place the electrodes this is the representation of your brain okay here we can able to cross a line the median line and the central line laterally we are just put like this we need to place the 10 to 20 electrodes according to the internationally 10 to 20 electrode systems we need to place the electrodes here here where is the placement of the electrodes here we can able to place the five electrodes in the in this side this is the 10 electrodes in the outside marking okay then this is the electrode inside the marking this is the electrodes we need to place in the central median line see here this is the marking of the electrode placement each and every markings having a separate name please remember according to the lobes of the brain of course you know that frontal parietal occipital and temporal along with that central lobes are there so according to the placement of the particular electrode it can be named as frontal parietal occipital temporal or central respectively here this two region it is in the occipital so this particular two electrodes are named as that is marking as considered as occipital lobes please remember then this particular thing is considered as the temporal lobe this this two this two is considered as the temporal lobe this this and this this considered as the temporal lobe please remember this three is considered as the parietal lobe please remember this three okay then this particular three is considered as the central lobe please remember and this particular thing all the things above the central is considered as the frontal lobe so this is how we can able to name the naming the markings of the electrodes here here this is occipital this is occipital this is temporal this is temporal how we can able to differentiate the same electrode markings we can able to place a numbers in the suffix that is like a t1 t2 indicates a temporal one temporal two like that okay we can able to differentiate as like a marking of suffix numbers suffix number is also very important here i just put the suffix number of each and every differentiation we can able to say the occipital lobe as o1 o2 in this down okay here we can able to indicate it as the temporal lobe here and here is t3 t5 t6 t4 please remember here all the thing is considered as the frontal i told you above the median line in the median line we can able to say as the central lobe we can able to differentiate as c3 c4 c z this is not c2 c z all the lines all the electrodes that is coming under the median line is indicated in the suffix ez please remember that is why i just putting c ez here in the frontal also i am indicating here f ez here in the parietal also i am indicating is p ez the central line placement are considered as ez in the suffix okay median line electrodes then this is f2 f3 and this is uh, f7 f3 f4 f6 f8 and then this is considered as fp1 fp2 that is called as a prefrontal lobes electrodes okay so this is the name of the placement that is occipital temporal parietal and frontal and in the median line we just mention at c is it so one more thing you need to remember is all the numbers that indicated here is this and all the numbers that is indicated in the right side is even numbers see all the numbers in the suffix are even number 2 4 6 8 like that all the numbers that is indicated in the left side is odd numbers so that is the variation also you need to remember in the right hand side all the suffix number it is in the even number in the left hand side all the suffix number indicated is the odd number okay then the median line it is indicated as ez so please remember this is the placement of the electrodes through this only we can acquire the EEG signal. This is the third question answer. The next question is, 
after acquiring the EEG, what is the waveforms you got? Using the electrodes, we are just picking the electrical activity of the brain, how the waveform is look like. We are receiving four important waveforms we got. Using the electrodes that are placed on the scalp, we are receiving four important waveforms. That is delta wave, theta wave, alpha wave and beta wave. This is according to the frequencies it varies. All these four waves have different frequency ranges. At the same time, at the different position, at the different stage of the particular persons, we receive these particular waves. Here, this delta wave is especially the person is in the deep sleep. That is in the dreaming stage, this delta wave will acquire. This theta wave, the person is in the drowsiness. During this time, during the time, the theta wave will rise. Then alpha wave, the person is in the relax while you are closing, after finishing all the works, while you are closing the eyes and feel relaxed, then this alpha wave will arise. Then the person is very busy, he is working, you are fast doing some of the activities, that time the beta wave will arise. So this is what the four different waves will arise. And one more wave we can go for a gamma wave. The gamma wave is arise, the person is especially for problem solving. They are, busy, they, are, they are busy with using their minds, problem solving especially. For that time, the gamma wave will arise. But the doctor analyzes these particular four waves for any disorders. Okay, so please remember, delta wave, theta wave, alpha wave and beta wave. Each and everything is arised during the condition of the patients. That is, during the deep sleep, during the drowsiness and during the relaxed condition and during busy with working. Okay, so these four waves will arise when you are placing the 10 to 20 electrodes over the scalp. Then the next question is measuring. What you can able to study using this waveforms that is alpha, delta, theta, alpha and beta. From these waves, what is the study we are go for? That is what is the measurement we need to take for? Of course, I already told you all these waves have different frequency ranges. So delta wave, this is a normal frequency. For beta wave, this is the normal frequency. If there is any fluctuations over that, in that particular frequency, then the person it is in the abnormal. So, once you know the normal range of each and every waves, then it is very comfortable to know that whether the person is in normal or abnormal. Okay, so the normal frequency ranges I will say. Please remember. Here, of course we know that delta is nothing but during the deep sleep we got this frequency. So, the frequency normal should be 3 hertz or below 3 hertz. Okay, then the theta. The theta will acquire especially during that time, the person is feel drowsy. Okay, the person is feel very tired. During the time, this frequency, that is 3.5 to 7.5 hertz, the person should receive. Then, during the time of alpha, the person is relaxed. During the, uh, just uh, close your eyes and getting relaxed. During the time, the frequency should be in between 7.5 to 13 hertz. Then, during the time of beta, that is, the, per the person is in very busy with working. The activity, the uh, briskness activity, fast activity. During the time, the frequency should be 14 or greater than that. That gamma I already told you, you know, that is more than 14 or more than 16 that is considered as a gamma. So this is the normal frequency range we need to determine for the normal persons. If there is any fluctuations over there in the frequency, then the person is considered as some abnormal condition. Okay, so this is how we can able to measure using these waves. Okay, hope you understand. So these are all the frequency ranges and waveforms. The other name, we can able to say always that delta wave is a very slow wave. Because it's having a frequency, because of that slow wave only, we get the frequency very minimum. Always this beta wave and gamma wave is a fast wave. It's considered as a fast wave. Because, because of this particular fastness, the frequency is more for these particular waves. This alpha wave is also called as the Berger's wave. Please remember. The other name of the alpha wave is the Berger's wave. This is all the extra information you need to note. Okay, this is very slow wave, this is very fast wave and apart from this, gamma wave is even very well, faster than that of the beta and this alpha is also called as the Berger's wave.
So we just uh, stop this topic today. That is, I hope I just answered all the questions. That is, what is EEG? What is the purpose of EEG? And what is the procedure to acquire this EEG signal from the brain? And what is the waveforms we got after the acquisition? And the final, what is the study we need to make from this EEG signal? So these are all the most important thing as a biomedical engineer you need to know. Okay. So the next class we are just go for the next vital parameter. Thank you very much.